Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Lamentations 3, 1-33, 55-58 We are about to read a chapter which is full of sorrow. While you are listening to it, some of you may be saying, we are not in that condition. Well then, be thankful that you are not. And while you hear of the sorrows of others, bless God for the joys you, yourself, experience. At the same time, remember that there is a way of sorrow which leads, at last, to rest and peace. There is truth in the words of the poet Cooper. The path of sorrow, and that path alone, leads to the land where sorrow is unknown. If you have never known the sorrows of the weeping prophet, or anything like them, I am not sure that you should congratulate yourselves, for there is a brokenness of heart that is worth more than the whole world. There is a crushed and bruised spirit in which the Lord delights and which is a token for good to the one who possesses it. Verses 1, 2 I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me, and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Some of us recollect when we used to go into our room, shut the door and read such a chapter as this and say, here is a description of my true condition. We were once broken in pieces, torn asunder through a terrible sense of sin. Our thoughts were like a case of knives perpetually pricking us and, at such a time, these were our words as well as the words of Jeremiah, he has led me, and brought me into darkness, but not into light. 3, 4. Surely against me is he turned, he turns his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin has he made old, he has broken my bones. Conviction of sin seems to dry up the very sap of our life till we become withered with age. Worse than the agony of a broken bone is the pain of a broken heart. When the Holy Spirit convinces of sin, believe me, it is no child's play. In the case of some of us, it was sore wounding. 5. He has built against me, as if he deliberately built walls to stop up my way and erected castles from which to attack my soul, he has built against me. 5. And compassed me with gall and travail. He has shut me up in a circle of bitterness. 6. 7. He has set me in dark places as they that are dead of old. He has hedged me about, that I cannot get out, he has made my chain heavy. Like a prisoner in his dungeon who has to wear manacles and fetters. 8. Also when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. That is the worst trial of all, for there is comfort in prayer. But when even that seems denied you, into what a terrible state of sorrow is your heart brought. 9 to 11. He has enclosed my ways with hewn stone, he has made my paths crooked. He was to me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He has turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces, he has made me desolate. You who remember that experience, Bless God that you have passed through it, that you have gone over that rough road into the place of peace and rest in Christ. You who have never known this path, it will be well for you when you do, difficult as you may find it. 12. He has bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. Every sermon I hear seems a shot at me, every text of scripture seems an arrow aimed at me. 13. He has caused the arrow of his quiver to enter into my loins. They are not merely shot at me, but they have actually hit me, they have wounded me, they have pierced me in vital parts. 
14 to 17. I was a derision to all my people, and their song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness, he has made me drunk with wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel stones, he has covered me with ashes. And you have removed my soul far off from peace, I forgot prosperity. It seems so long ago since I was prosperous that I forget what it was like. I have been so troubled that I do not remember what it was to be at ease. 18-21 And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul has them still in remembrance, and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Notice that in all his sorrow, this man still had hope. His soul was humbled and, therefore, he had hope. I think that in the New Zealand language, the word for hope is, swimming thought, the thought that swims when everything else is drowned. Oh, what a mercy it is that hope can live on when all things else appear to die. 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Hear that, troubled heart. You are not yet destroyed, you are still in the land of the living, as we say, on praying ground and pleading terms with God. It is of Jehovah's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. 23, 24. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore will I hope in him. With all my troubles, losses and griefs, I still have a God. Therefore will I hope in him. 25. The Lord is good to them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. Even though it is out of the depths of the utmost distress that you see God, you shall find him to be good to you. He is hard to none, unkind to none. Only go and test him and try him, and you shall find that it is even as I say. 26, 27. It is good that a man should both help and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bears the yoke in his youth. And it is not bad for him if he keeps on bearing it in his old age. Our shoulders always need the yoke. We are such uncertain creatures that we cannot bear too much freedom, even from sorrow. 28 to 31 he sits alone and keeps silent, because he has borne it upon him. He puts his mouth in the dust, if so there may be hope. He gives his cheek to him that smites him, he is filled full with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. What music there is in that line? He may put you away for a while and seem to leave you, but, the Lord will not cast off forever. God may seem to put us away from him, but it is written, he hates putting away there is no divorce between Christ and the soul that is once espoused to him. Their separation shall not be perpetual, for nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 32, 33 but though he causes grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. Now notice, in the 55th verse, what came to the prophet after all this sorrow. 55, 56. I called upon your name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. You have heard my voice, hide not your ear at my breathing, at my cry. Sometimes our prayers get to be so very weak that they are only a breathing. 
Yet we must never forget that prayer is the breath of God in men, returning from where it came. And praying breath is never spent in vain. 57, 58 You drew near in the day that I called upon you, you said, Fear not. O Lord, you have pleaded the causes of my soul. What a comfort it is that Christ in heaven is our great advocate and that he has pleaded the causes of our soul before the throne of God. 58. You have redeemed my life. He who is our advocate is also our redeemer and, therefore, we are doubly safe. Glory be to his name.